Ladies and gentlemen, before we start today's episode, if you ever hear this message, I would like to know that we deeply appreciate everyone who subscribes to the Neko Pastel channel. <laughs> <laughs> What's up y'all, this is Neko Prasto and welcome back to the letter. I have Kieran with me. Neko Prasto? Neko <laughs> And I am Preeran <laughs> apparently. Preeran? <laughs> no. That'll work. Neko Pastel and Kieran coming at you from Neko Pastel's house. <laughs> Neko Pastel's house. Um, but yeah, in the last episode, oh look at Isabella, she's got that lip mm. bite going. Mm. Isabella came and was like, I got chased by a really scary girl. And then he's like, Hannah, you guys shut the fuck up, it's like three in the morning. Okay. And then, she, <laughs> and then she came in and sat on that quote unquote couch, which looks like it could hold like a third of a person. Zach's a big guy, Zach is he's like a heavy set guy. He's, he takes up, he must be squashed sitting in that couch. Aye. The two of them are cooking in the kitchen right now. <laughs> Together, where we left off. We, we left off rather abruptly, they were in the middle of action. Yeah. Um, action. Uh, action. I think we should read new journal entries and see what the hell's going on. Because um, we have new in the timeline. I think it's just October 25th we have. Um, yeah, yep. we do. Oh, and there's pictures too. Let's have a read at these, shall we? Shout out to the artist of Young Ape, whoever the artist. I'm not sure I've not seen the credits, but the, the art, artist does an incredible job. The art is really us. good. Yeah, Especially really in a visual good. novel, because I mean, your work is front and centre. Aye. I'll let you have a read of this, Kieran. But on Tuesday, October 25th, a frightened Isabella Santos knocked at Zachary Steele's apartment in the middle of the night. Shaken, she refused to say what happened. Zachary let her stay, regardless. Come morning, Zachary received a phone call from Ashton, who was looking for Isabella. Zachary had informed him that she stayed over and of the circumstances. Before ending the call, Ashton offered to pick her up. Let me move to the next page. And scared Nico Pastel and Kieran with his randomly appearing phone. Oh, for God's sake, the phone. <laughs> Still on Tuesday, Isabella saw Zachary taking an unknown medicine and, concerned, asked what it was for. He admitted, he, he admitted he's suffering from a trauma ever since his parents were killed in a hate crime. Isabella could only offer him a comfor comforting hug to lighten the mood that he decided to cook breakfast afterwards. Ah, oh, look who's cooking in the kitchen. <laughs> Too many chefs in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, it says... As usual, it says we have something new in the relationship, but nothing is new at Isabella all. Isabella absolutely fucking adores you. Aye. Oh, look. Uh, we're almost to a full bar, yeah. so that's good. Maybe but if we get it full, she won't die. Let's try and get it to a full bar, shall we? Um, but yeah, I will let you give this a start, Kieran. I'll let you start. So as we come back in, despite the massive effort to keep the mood light and with small chatter, cooking ends up being a mostly quiet affair. Between us, the consistent clapping of the kit of the knife against the board and the muffled noise of the television I left running, words have become surprisingly difficult to string together. I know how you mean, big man. <laughs> <laughs> Not entirely unusual. We've had moments like this before, but definitely unnerving with how things are now. I really wish someone else would come knocking at the door. Unpleasant as this is, Breaking the ice or keeping a conversation going has never been my fo my forte. That's always been Isabella's or Rebecca's department. Sometimes ashes, although most coming from him border on awkward or embarrassing. Don't tell us about it. Speaking of the guy, he never did call back, and I'm willing to bet my entire yearly salary that he fell right back to sleep after that call. <laughs> huh. oh. Sorry, Bella, could you? Yep, I got it. The potatoes are almost ready, by the way. I turned down the heat just in case. You might want to check on them, though. Oh, bless. Hold on! I'll be right there! Oh, for breakfast. <laughs> Sheesh! Wait up! If you keep rapping at the door like that, you'll break it down! Wait, potatoes for breakfast? Yeah. Really? Maybe having Rosties. <laughs> oh. Ash! Oh, good. You're awake. Uh, of course. Hello! <laughs> Ash has already welcomed himself in when I take my eyes away from the oven. He's never been really keen. He's never been really keen with the notion of courtesies after he's warmed up to you. This guy. That was courtesies. <laughs> Does the matter? All thirteen of my locks he broke can attest to that. He's a good fellow though. 
Maybe a tad bit standoffish at first glance, but he's trustworthy. Don't you have work today? I could ask the same of you. There we go. There's the lip bait. <laughs> hey, Z man, you late? Something came up. You need to drop the Z man. It's getting old. Sorry, I got caught with something at the precinct on the way here. Had to attend to that first before things got out of hand. I'd tell you about it, but you know how it can be with those kinds of things. Later, maybe. And you're here because? What? I'm not allowed to say hello? No. I doubt you're here because of that. <laughs> and you're not answering my question. Ah, oh, my bad, my bad. Forgot to mention that. I told him to get you the fuck out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Oh, <laughs> Bye, bitch. Looking for you. <laughs> Rebecca's worried because you didn't come home last night. You could have called my cell instead. You weren't picking up. Anyway, I'd really hate to cut this little get-together short, but I need to be somewhere else. Come on, Isabella, let's get you home. I'll drop you off on the way. Ooh, that was short. Wait, we're going now? He lightly claps a hand on her arm and begins ushering her out of the apartment, throwing a casual wave at me as they pass. Isabella, on the other hand, doesn't appear too fond of the idea. And sure enough, before they can even cross the threshold, she puts a firm foot down, the force alone enough to halt them both and catch the taller man off guard. It would have made for a funny picture. The way Ash almost crashes into her and Isabella giving him an indignant pout over her shoulder. Surprise and confusion are all on his face at once. Two things that rarely ever grace it if he can help it. I am confusion. <laughs> I am a confusion. A rare moment even for our small group. If only I had my camera with me. Dang. What is it? Zach cooked something. If it's just food, I'll get you something on the way back. Fuck you! But the food! <laughs> it's Zach's cooking! Real delicious food that actually tastes like food. At least stay and have a bite. Please, Zach, help me here! <laughs> These two. Whenever they are in the same room, sometimes it feels like herding a group of unruly kids instead of talking to two mature adults. One moment they're engaged in pleasant chit chat, and the next they're bickering over a minor issue. Frankly, if I didn't know any better and I have an overactive imagination, I'd say there's something going on. Oh. <laughs> Never mind how utterly impossible that idea is. Oh yeah, it's utterly impossible, but it's just odd. <laughs> <laughs> but it might, ju it might just be me reading too much into things, like always. I can already hear Ash's laughter if I so much as suggest such. Oh. This, however. Hmm, okay, so another the choice. fuck you mean you ate my cooking? <laughs> this is a good, this is a good, uh, you know, it's good. This is good, we've got another, we open up with another choice. Um, I cooked up a feast. I know you're busy. I cooked up a feast. I think she sh I think they should both stay. Because it's just the fact, like, because I f it would feel bad because the two of them went through a lot of prep. Aye. He's clearly cooked a lot more food than just for the one person, Aye. and I would feel really bad if it just I, I'm picturing like Zach alone in his house with no room with lots of food. No, and I wouldn't want to do that. They Besides, have... Isabella needs food. It definitely. Ah, uh, let's let's have them. Now, I don't know about you two, but I think you guys should really stay. I've already made enough food for all of us, and it'd be a waste. Why I cooked up that special honey glazed ham you two keep on yapping about. Got some scalloped potatoes with onions and cheddar to go with it too. It's supposed, supposed to be breakfast, correct? <laughs> that sounds so good though. <laughs> oh. The oven timer dings, noted by the loud ding. <laughs> ding. I shoot the two of them an apologetic look before sauntering over the kitchen, mittens in hand. I just quickly, because our relationships went up. Oh. oh. I think our relationship with Ashton went up, obviously, and look, Isabella's gone all the way to the top. I think Ashton probably liked the fact that you were being a good friend. I mean, because it's not something like, I don't think you could bring the relationship down for offering you food. You yeah. I mean? Like, he hasn't done anything to slight you. Yeah, of course. The sweet smell of the glaze and salty tang of melted cheese wafts through the air as soon as I open the door and take out the two trays inside. Is someone that, like, Yang Yang Mobile like a cook? Because I've noticed, like, <laughs> someone's really tuned in, because it's like, whenever, whenever there's food in this game, Aye. it's very in-depth <laughs> like, descriptions of the food. That or they're inspired by Ignis mm. from Final Fantasy XV. Recipe! <laughs> Recipe! The scent immediately fills the entire room, and even with the door and windows open, the mouth-watering aroma lingers. <laughs> it's appealing enough that when I... I don't even think that was the game, I think that was me. <laughs> It's appealing enough that when I put the dishes down on the counter, another starved stomach protests loudly, followed by a burst of laughter. <laughs> My head snaps up at the two of them, and I can't keep back the smile at the sight they make. 
Isabella is clinging to the door frame for support, doubled over with breathless laughter. Oh, bless. <coughs> Ash is the more composed of the two, trying to look unconcerned, but a flush has crept up his neck and cheeks. Oh, bless. It's clear whose stomach that came from, and Isabella's not going to let him live this down. <laughs> You're in no place to reject an offer of free food, Frey. I wasn't... I wasn't... rejecting anything. They should fuck up to it now. <laughs> Damien, I just missed a meal, that's all. Don't get all sundry on <laughs> us. Don't you be giving me none of that passive-aggressive bullshit, Ashton Frey. Aw, he's flustered. God. Shut it. <laughs> Those guys at the precinct said it was urgent. Somebody has to be responsible for it. It's not like I like your food or anything, baka. <laughs> Well, aren't you precious? To precious. <laughs> precious. Right. You know, if you keep laughing like that, you'll burst. I'm sure it won't be as bad as your stomach suddenly rumbling like a starved. I kiddos, play nice. Who's gonna get cold if we keep this up? Ash, you gonna stay? Might as well, since Scaredy Cat's so hell bent on staying. Oh. Oh god, that looks really good. Look at them. <laughs> Man, Isabella's face, like, I have never seen so much, like, unhindered <laughs> joy on a human being's uh, face. <laughs> Look at Ashton putting his feet up, he's just making himself welcome at home. No. We eventually Lesson. set up, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was I'm just bad. surprised by all the potatoes and cheese and meat. Oh. <laughs> I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> we eventually settled down after the food has been served. The jibes replaced by another round of friendly chatter, mostly about what's going on in the news the night before. You mean Isabella's dead friend? Oh, stop it! Awkward! <laughs> <laughs> there is, however, a conscious effort to avoid mentioning what's currently on the headlines. Right. Do you just hear it fit outside? x ray x ray read all about it! Local <laughs> green haired woman gets chopped into bits! <laughs> oh, God. No. The dead is never a good topic to talk over food and polite company. In this case in particular. <laughs> Tell me about that. <laughs> The dead. <laughs> the dead. The winds are too fresh, too soon. I'd like to avoid it as well if I were her in, person, in her position. And someone I personally knew passed away in a gruesome manner like that. Oh, you could do it with the enter button. Uh -huh. No, I never knew that. Okay. Though perhaps. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Well. Oh, well. Oh, well. Not bad. I'm I mean, sorry. you guys will get to read that we won't. But, but even then, we are careful, Ash and I. What the hell I said a second ago. <laughs> we keep the conversation light and avoid bringing her up late, but her business partner. It's the least we can do. The rights? Yeah, they're planning to move in soon. In fact, they already have a housewarming party planned. Well, at least, at least we know where we are now in the timeline. Aye. It's why they wanted us to rush the papers. They wanted to send the invitations out as soon as possible. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> get what? Remember what I told you last night about the new clients? Vaguely? Sorry. Ooh. I was a little out of it yesterday. Was it the photo shoot? Yep. It's actually for the one you saw. Ermin. Ermat. Something. Ermagerd. Ermagerd. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry if you hear any knocking in the background. There's construction workers outside uh, making a ruckus. When you put it that way, I suppose it makes sense why my boss wants me to prioritize the couple. They can have those documents rushed at just a snap of their fingers. And they're more influential than I initially thought. <laughs> and I guess my boss is expecting a lot more from this project than I expected. Hope I can live up to it. Your photographs are more than good enough, Zack. You'd probably win an international award if you let yourself. Ma'am Hana's easy to please, too. As long as you're good at following instructions. Hana. 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 Easier said than done. Different clients have different tastes, after all. Still, a week? I don't think that's possible. Now that you mentioned it, yeah. They wanted everything finished at the earliest. To be honest, it's not unheard of, but... But it's still fish... weird. Mm -hmm. Still Fishy. weird, yeah? Fishy. <laughs> A slip of the tongue. It's still barely noticeable to someone who's already familiar with Ash's ways. Yet in this moment, it's impossible to miss. I shoot him a curious glance, but he ignores it. Rather pointedly. I can't exactly say it's like that, where I'm just the middleman after <coughs> all. As much as I want to comment on it, I only know what's on the surface, not the in and outs. It's just that BRC and my boss are more hands-on with the legal stuff this time. 
despite having a separate department dedicated to it. Maybe Mr. Wright helped with it too. They have their own legal team for this, don't they? Hey, Mr. Wrong? Wrong. <laughs> well, they should have one. Especially for a big property like this. They have, but like I said, it's off our hands. If anything, to I me, skip that this just means I'll be able to send the rest of the funds to Papa's treatment earlier. I'm stupid. I guess that makes a whole lot of sense. Officially off our instant noodle diet, aren't we? Ash, has anyone ever told you that you have an uncanny way of ruining the mood? Oh, look at that face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh. I, just, I just like the fact they turned around just two seconds. He's like, I'm sorry, who doesn't have a house? <laughs> oh no, you did! The hell kind of police no, officer is a hobo? I was just saying, a uh, few more months of stuffing your face with those, and I'm sure you'll start to look like a noodle cup. <laughs> uh, that's a pretty picture. At least I don't live off convenience store food. Or make poor, unassuming pressure cookers explode. What? How did you. Oh, come on, Zach! S sorry, it just came up while we were cooking earlier. <laughs> I'm impressed, Ashton Frey. You even made it to the news. A one-time thing, and it wasn't as big as you seem to be imagining. Oh, sure. Let's all pretend that one time you almost set my apartment on fire didn't happen, too. Hey, that was an accident. <laughs> you were making a salad, Ash. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck out of salad are you making? I just want a salad. <laughs> Can we please move on to a different topic? <laughs> that helps. The casual talk, the harmless teasing, the mundane stories interesting enough to let time pass unnoticed. By the time lunch ends, the shadows are no longer at the forefront of my mind. If it's the same for Isabella, for whatever troubles her, I can never tell. These things, the anxiety, the fear, they ain't, exa they ain't easily seen, they ain't easily forgotten after all. You go on ahead, I've got a few things I need to ask Zach. I'll be downstairs in a minute. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. Like he was like, come on, we gotta go quickly, and now he's like, yeah, you go on, I have to stay here longer and ask him questions. I mean, casual. <laughs> Change that chin. Confusion briefly flashes in her eyes as she catches the keys he tosses over. But he doesn't give her an answer, and waits for her to go ahead. How sure are you I won't be driving away with your Shirley? You don't even have a license! Do you even know how to? Papa taught me how. I'm probably a better driver than you. See you later, Zach. Thanks for the food. <laughs> Always has to have the last word, don't you? You're welcome. I'll send you the recipe for the potatoes tonight. You grow them in the ground. <laughs> A grin is back on her face when she leaves and closes the door behind her. For a little while after we're left alone, Ash goes wholly quiet, listening, waiting for her remaining footsteps in the hall to fade. The elder amusement is gone from his face, replaced by what can only describe as trepidation. <coughs> I declare my throat. I know that look all too well. When he's like this, he's expecting shit to go down at some point soon. That wasn't very nice, Ash. What was that with Isabella earlier? You're usually subtler with your questions. They hired you. Hired me who? Don't change the subject yet. What's really going on here? Mm -hmm. The Wrights. Luke and Hannah Wright. You said your next gig is with them. Is that what this is all about? Just be careful around them. You have no idea what you're dealing with when it comes to that couple. I'd rather you stay as far away from them as possible, but you're already here. Isabella's the real estate agent. <sighs> Seriously, of all the people in Luxburn. What is going on? <laughs> okay. I guess I'll just have to take your word for it. So it sounds like. So clearly there's an investigation going on about uh, the rights. Oh wow. He nods, claps a comforting hand on my back, and turns to leave without another word. He's never been good with those. Oh gosh. <clears throat> More often he fumbles with what he has to say but his actions alone are enough to tell me how grateful he is for the trust. He reaches for the knob as soon as he gets to the door, but doesn't turn it. Instead, he looks back and gestures with his head towards the table. I don't need to follow his line of sight to know what he's going to ask about. He's likely taken notice of it the moment he entered the room. You back on those? I haven't seen you taking them in a year. Oh, the peels. Yeah, that kind of had to. It got worse after the film fest. The dreams, that is. 
I, I don't think I'll be doing that again anytime soon. I heard about that. Don't drop it, though. You don't want Becca scolding you. She actually enjoyed the movie you made, and she's hard to please. Consider that a small victory. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. She already did. Rebecca and Bella both gave me an earful after I said the opposite. Promised them I wouldn't, but you can never tell. Hopefully, once I feel better, I'll be able to think about it properly. Speaking of Bella, she didn't open up to me, but maybe with you and Rebecca... Yeah, I'll try. I can't promise anything, but I'll talk to her. Thanks. That's all I'm asking. This time, when he reaches for the door, he lifts it closed fully behind him without glancing back. Mm. Ooh, the journals. Yes. A mild draft sweeps him to the room as I close the door behind him, slightly disturbing the papers on the nearby fridge. 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 A lone note flutters by my feet, the letters on the surface glaring at me with mute intensity. Uh, you have an appointment in the Urban Good Mansion for Hannah Wright at 11am for luxury living. Ooh. After Ashton's warnings, they all hold a different meaning now. October Ooh. 27th, Thursday. Do you want to stay somebody now? I feel, like, I feel bad to feel like I've been sta taking the spot. I mean, I sure I'll give it a wee go. I hear humming. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can do this with the humming. <laughs> The next two days rush by in a blur, all together leaving a collective mess of work suddenly piling up and new unexpected acquaintances, or friends, depends on how you look at it, really. Either way, I'm stuck developing these photos at 3 in the morning to reach a deadline set by an over-eager art director. Don't get me wrong, Julius is good, has a vision, and knows what he wants. But damn, he can be too enthusiastic sometimes. Doesn't matter when you couldn't sleep anyway. Oh bless him. There was nothing new in it, of course. After years of working as a freelance photographer, it's simply something I have grown used to. Get to know people, build a client base, do good work and cash in some late hours if need if need be. Rinse and repeat. It certainly takes a while to get some footing on the field. But it's like the kind of thing that pays off in the long run, as long as you keep at it. Given enough time, you might end up with big names on your client list. Names like the Wrights in particular. I never did pay much attention to them, but it's virtually impossible not to hear about them when the local news channel or paper has something to say about their name. Has something to say on their name, should I say. A part of here... An acquisition there. Did Buying I say up all the land of Luxborn. Oh, oh, to be fair. <laughs> Sometimes it's a new business venture. Other times it's everyday gossip that typically follows popular people like them. Not in a million years did I ever imagine I would end up working for such a high-profile couple. And between that and the fuss that it comes with, it leaves me no time to ponder over whatever happened to Isabella or why Ash is so adamant we keep away from the pair. They do seem like the good folk, though, despite the whole fame thing. Despite that one's a raging racist. Oh, I. Sure, there was a rumour running around years ago about them being involved in some business scandal. But just like every gossip blown out of proportion by the media, nothing came of it, and eventually, it simply died down. Much is definitely left to be said for the husband, but I doubt a woman like Mrs. Wright would pick him if he doesn't have any good points at all. Mrs. Wright. Hannah herself, though. Ooh. <laughs> oh, her pictures. She ain't particularly bad the way the press make her out to be. The tabloids had it all wrong. That's for sure. For someone born with a silver spoon in her mouth, well, she ain't exactly what I was expecting. Among other things... The newfound friendship is what I least expected from her, but here we are. Although with a life as public as the rights, no wonder it's the woman who often gets the crappy end of the stick. I can't help but feel sorry for her. She's a real nice person when given the chance. Heck, she might have even ended up friends with Rebecca and Isabella too, if they aren't living worlds apart. Probably. 
The beep quickly pulls me back before my thoughts travel any further. In one practice motion, I carefully place the wet print I'm holding on a drying rack and amble over my makeshift dark room to get the last look of the photos from the water bath. Inside the converted broom closet, the film processor lets out another soft clack before going on its standby mode. Damn, he's still using like well, he's still using like films you need to develop. Nice. Aye, he has a really old fashioned camera, and even Hannah points that out in the previous uh, <laughs> chapter. At his mouth, a lone photograph sits in the tray, barely visible with a lack of light. Uh oh. It's the last one tonight for this for the set Mrs. Wright requested. I don't usually make this a habit, giving away stuff that is. It's bad for business, no matter how well intentioned or generous you are. Can't speak today. This exception, however. She did treat me well and was a pleasant companion all throughout the shoot. Even if she didn't ask, I would have probably given her a few prints just for the hell of it. Mrs. Wright ain't such a bad subject matter to begin with. And maybe. This is just me, but for someone who has everything at the palm of her hands, all the money in the world, a loving husband, and plenty and a plenty big mansion to call home, she's lonely. She doesn't just appear like it. It shows in the tone of her voice, how she moves, and most certainly in her smiles. Always hidden behind the glamour for the world to never see. Sometimes... Sometimes for people like her, small things like these help. A reminder that the world can be kind too. Water drips from the paper as I blindly pick it up and gently lay it on another tray, holding a decent amount of photo flow. Got a bad feeling about this. (laughs) A few seconds under the solution is all it needs before it's ready for drying. No good rushing this last one, even if my body already screaming for some decent snooze. My hand fumbles for the light switch, moving towards it with familiarity, while I fish for a squeegee. Is that the thing that you use on the windows? That is actually. Ah, a squeegee. Among the, me- uh, among the mess of tools on the drawer with another. With the other. The bulb flickers twice, before, it, before its glow settles and casts a soft light in the tiny space. When I glance back down, squeegee in hand, ready to finish the process and finally call it a night. What on earth? Oh. <laughs> her head is gone. Actually, her head is still there. It's, it's, it's still there. It's just... Deformed. It's just really fucked up. <laughs> Hannah Wright, how's your, how's your head? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Blurred and distorted beyond recognition, rather. The area completely smudged over leaving no trace of the same sweet smile the good woman carried in all the previous prints. Damn, that was too careless. A common mistake to make, of course. If one is neglect... Uh, neg- ne- negligent. Oh, yeah. If one is negligent enough to pick a newly processed photo in the dark, I, like I apparently did. It's happened before. Loads of times, actually. But I still can't help but feel a small pang of frustration over one mistake a newbie would likely make. With a sigh, I reach up for the switch again, intending to develop a new one from scratch. It could pass off for one of those supernatural pictures they show on TV, though. (laughs) It probably would. A memory clicks. One cursory thought in a sea of many, in a short yet distinct second from the day before. A glimpse is all I got. But it's enough to burn the image in my mind. There was a shadow. Oh, that was the picture. No. A woman. In her twenties or early thirties, maybe? But with how far gone her flesh alone has become, it's not possible to tell at first glance. Her skin itself has already taken a sickly pale colour. Rotten in most parts, blood dripping from every open gash in that lesion. lesion and lesion on her body. Bony hands grip Miss Wright's neck like a noose, stringing the skin underneath with a vibrant shade of scarlet. 
nothing but malice fills the gleam in her eyes. Zachary! Did you notice that? Like, she's even, like, moving her head? Yeah. Not for me, but for Miss Wright. Zach, is something the matter? Oh, no, no, there, there, there's nothing wrong. I, I just remembered something that's all. Let's get back to the pictures. Can you move a bit more to the left, yeah? Oh, <laughs> the memory alone is enough to make me rich. I brushed it off then. A trick of the eye, I told myself, or a product of the heat. The weather has been unexpectedly warm recently, so it shouldn't be too surprising for such things to happen. And, well, blaming this on the usual, fatigue, an overworked brain, the weather, or an amateur error on my part, is far more convenient. It makes a whole lot of sense than what the small voice in my head whispers. The same tiny voice that only makes itself known when something's a foul. The same one that lent a curious ear to Isabella's worries about the mansion. And with each second I spent staring at this photograph, the murmurs in my head only grow louder against my ears. Someone has to know. Oh, show the photo to Hannah or show it to Ash. Oh, I'm gonna quickly save. So... Oh, God. Should we show the photo to Hannah or show it to Ash? What should we do? What should we do? Oh, it's the thing before. Because I know for a fact... If we walk up to the Armagard mansion... Hannah might not be in her right mind. Aye. However... Obviously, we should show the photo to Ash because he says... Maybe he needs a bit more convincing. Aye. And the way it says, because Ash might be in their position to do something about it, to keep it in that group of friends. Do you think if we showed that kind of picture to Hannah, it would actually put her in a bad mood? Well, because if we show it to Ash, we can tell him, like, maybe I'll show it to the group, because he'll be there. If we show it to Hannah, then... Because I'm trying to think, she might put her in worse. Not to, not to mention the fact that Mr. Wright might be with her. Do you, do, you want to, do you want to try Dane Hannah first and then try Dane Ash? I don't know. <laughs> so. Oh, wait, have we saved it before? Ah, we saved it. Aye. Go to Hannah first? I would say go to Hannah. See, because I'm. Normally I would say go to Ash, that would be my actual answer, just because I'm thinking, see look what we did with Isabella before? Aye. Showing all the bad scenarios? Uh huh. I definitely think showing it to Hannah is going to be a bad scenario. Okay, let's, let's go for that then. I don't have an explanation for what I saw yesterday. Yeah. But when you've been there, something is enough to raise the hairs on the back of your neck or leave you wanting to flee or hide. Finding more solid proof than a person's smudged off face on a photo is the least of my concerns. Ashton will undoubtedly give me flack for saying that for saying that or not even considering Isabella's words for those silly tales about the place. The guy's a skeptic through and through. I'll take more than my account for him to even give this a single thought. However, more than his opinion, it's Mrs. Wright I'm concerned about. Surely, she must have felt something. If those show on, if those shows on TV are to be believed, a touch of coldness in her neck, or maybe the feeling of being watched—that's what often happens, ain't it? She didn't feel anything though. Nope. No, she didn't notice anything. Not a thing. Oh shit, I missed a bit of dialogue. This is- oh my god. Uh, good enough time to mull over how- uh, Good enough time to mull over how I'll go about the about warning her. Plenty of space to check if I'll get the same result if I redo the process again. The film processor hums back to life at my touch. The light switch gives it a soft click. And darkness embraces the small closet again. Somehow those urban legends don't sound so silly now. Oh God! I'll let you go ahead. Oh, no. <coughs> In hindsight, this is a dumb idea. Oh, thanks, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> that is to say, rushing to a client I barely know is home first thing in the morning with news of a ghost lady potentially haunting our newly bought property. Oh, and there's a hunch of bizarre-looking pictures of Miss Hannah I've brought as proof too. So yeah. Dumbest idea in the history of dumb ideas, all things considered. Travelling to the outskirts of Anselm Village at the crack of dawn with only my bike, his company, equally so. 
personally. I don't think any of them would take whatever I'm going to say well, no matter how nice or accommodating they are. Ashton himself would tell me the same thing. Odds are, he'll laugh at it in my face for good measure. If he doesn't freak out at me first or not listening to his warnings. Still, that's a whole separate can of worms I'll open at a different time. Seeing as I'm already standing at the right's front porch, waiting for someone to answer the damn door. More than anything, Mrs Wright needs to know there's a possibility nothing safe in this place. Warnings from friends be damned. If only someone would answer the door sooner. Come on. You hands! <laughs> I try to ignore the looming presence their large, ornate doors give off as I press the doornail for the fourth time. Its shrill ringing merely echoes carried off by another warm passing breeze. The first time I came to this place, I found myself basking in the silence it offers. Now the atmosphere is just heavy, packed with trepidation and tension. As a bell is right, it does radiate that creepy cane of vibe. And with the image from the day before constantly flashing in my mind, the unease becomes harder to ignore as each second drifts by. Not wanting to spend more time here than necessary, I ring the bell again. Another long second ticks by without anyone answering the door. If this fails, I can always go to Ash. Not really the most sensible course of action either, but waiting here ain't doing me any good. For all I know, the rights could be out of town. As luck would have it, just as I'm about to turn on my heel, a loud thump rises from the other side. Oh. Sorry to clear my thought. <laughs> did you hear that? I did. Full steps. It's followed by heavy footfalls and a string of very colourful expletives about one's parent parentage. Didn't we have that bloody annoying doorbell replaced yesterday? Uh. That Irish charge has cost me a fortune and you can't even fix this new thing. <laughs> oh, I don't know that voice anywhere. <laughs> okay. If another pressing that bell, I swear I'll cut that. Fucking hell. Oh. He's got issues. Oh. Oh, this is going to be good. Oh, I knew this was going <laughs> to fucking happen. I, knew I, I did say it. There's for the people to say, I was going to, we all were going to vote Ash. This is just to see what's going to happen. Oh, let's, let's, let's see. The door swings open and a very irate Mr. Wright greets me. His partly rumpled appearance, a clear testament to how early the hour is. And who might you be? <laughs> I'm the one that's gonna steal your wife. <laughs> I don't recall asking the movers to show up this early. I was pre I was preferred to face Miss Wright, the butler more so. But Mr. Wright, I don't quite know what to make of him yet. He surely knows how to make an impression. I'll give him that. I'll be a rude one. I only caught sight of him yesterday as he's directing the movers. Although from how exacerbated he sounded then, it seemed like more yelling was done than actual giving him directions. Needless to say, I'd like to believe most of those instances. Needless to say, I'd like to believe those instances ain't all there to this guy. Mrs. Wright, at the end of the day, did marry him. Yeah, that's true. She saw something. Standing before him like now, though, is a different story altogether. Despite the difference in our respective heights. He manages to make it appear like he is the one looking down at me and not the other way around. An apology instinctively forms in my mouth before anything else when he arches an eyebrow at my lack of response. Well, um, that's not exactly why I'm here, uh, Mr. Wright, yeah? Right, of course, the one and only. And what can I do for you this fine morning? Have I seen you somewhere before? Bloody you peasants all look the same to me. Oh, wow. Talk about fucking red. I, uh, yeah, I'm actually. It doesn't matter. I don't care. I've got someplace important to be at today. Why did you ask who he was if you immediately responded with "I don't care"? Aye. <laughs> to be fair, there must be some interest in there. You must want to know. Just he... spit out what you want or be gone. I haven't got all day. So he's talking about he's talking about peasant talk as well. So Aye. Right in that damn house. His eyes are sharp and expecting in spite of this indifferent tone. The very impression of someone whose sharp wits has served him well throughout life. The kind you have to carefully choose your words around. 
disconcerting how a simple conversation can easily seem like a ruthless form of social manoeuvring. I can see why Mrs Wright would want to steer clear of it, if only for a short while. Oh. <coughs> Sometimes the only way out of the game is to be honest. Hmm, okay. So, uh, oh, these either one of these could be bad, actually. I want to definitely try and go for the good one. Yeah. I definitely want to go and try for the good one, so I'm going to save, and if we get the bad one, I'll definitely change that. I would say, I would say, because, like, if you say I'm a photographer, it'll be like, you already had your shoot, fuck off. I'm a drinking absinthe. Or I'm a friend of Hannah. The thing is, is that, like, Cause, like Luke hasn't too keen on his anyway, but at the same time, he was going on, like, a few episodes ago, he, he was, was going off, off. He was pissed off, and he was drinking absinthe and going on about how, like, you know, the press are just, like, looking to make a juicy story yeah. for their next big headline. So they don't care about you. They don't that care one, about... you're going to see your paparazzi, which is going to trigger him. Uh -huh. That one, you're going to see you're a friend of Hannah, which probably is still going to trigger him. I would just say we're a friend of Hannah, because if we say we're paparazzi, he's probably not going to let us in the house. Sorry, sir. I, I was just... Who? Let's see. Hannah. We it never left. affected Luke in the slightest, but Hannah's relationship went... Ooh! To, to be fair, I don't think Luke can have much more of a slighted expression of as the asshole that he is. Well, let's be fair. You see, I, I'm a friend of Hannah, and... A friend of Hannah! <laughs> <laughs> yes, we you are. Choose your words carefully, you fuck. Exactly. If I hear one in, we're the one be pissed. We have our ears and eyes on you. Uh, yes, sir. His eyebrows shoot into his hairline at my answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you see that? He done the same. He's got the same laugh. Uh. <laughs> Although it swiftly disappears under his dismissive gesture, and I chuckle at his heels. A small frown spreads across my face before I can stop myself. What I said has nothing remotely funny in it, yet here he is, hugging an arm closer to himself in a weak attempt to keep his shoulder from shaking. Did I mispronounce something or wrong or...? No, no, not at all, you didn't. She, my wife, has never mentioned a friend like you. <laughs> That's all. Mr. Wright, mm, watch Mr. yourself. Mm, I suppose it's a good thing she's venturing out of the usual. Vultures and savages, all of them hiding under sheep's clothing. I... I don't really get it, sir, but it's not really surprising she wouldn't talk about me. We just met yesterday during the shoot. Shoot! Re... <laughs> <laughs> Road range ready. ready. <laughs> as soon as the statement is out, the amicable air melts away almost palpably. His eyebrows cease into a frown, and his posture stiffens. With how fast the atmosphere around us changes in merely the span of a few spoken words, I'm not sure what I can and can't say anymore. Like handling a ticking time bomb. Is this why Ashton wants us to stay away from them? Because they're nasty. Well, no Hannah. Him. <laughs> if so, a part of me regrets not listening to him now. Shoot. Who are you again? Zachary Steele, sir. I was here yesterday from the magazine feature about your home. Ah, that Zachary, the photographer. I remember now. Just when you think she'd be careful meddling around media types these days, she makes friends with one. Can you give us a chance, please? It was really just small chit-chat, sir. The usual. Uh, to keep things entertaining. The shoot did take the whole afternoon to finish. Oh, I'm sure she was pleasantly entertained. She wouldn't be making friends with media types if she wasn't. No matter. She's her own woman. She can do what she wants so long as she doesn't do anything to ruin herself. I'm sure Miss Wright is aware of that, sir. <laughs> that she is. But we aren't here to talk about her, are we? What is this about today? The city's a long way from here. <laughs> On push bike, no less. I... yeah, I was actually hoping to talk to her. Of course! Here for another headline, perhaps! I bet see, man. You insult them, man. You insult them. People's heritage and pe some people's skin colour, yeah. and then you sell people's vehicle. You are a dick. Yeah. <laughs> well done, Mr. Ray. Mr. Wrong. Not exactly, sir. Uh, I'm off work. This is for something else. <laughs> That's what they always say. The next thing you know, your face is in the front page of every conceivable scandal sheet going all the way to the ass end of Plymouth. You media types have such an insatiable taste for gossip. 
It's almost amazing. You have an insatiable taste for absinthe, and alcohol is almost amazing. And assholery. <laughs> and <laughs> fuckery. Any of that in an interior design magazine, sir. I can assure you that one. How did that clarify that as well? <laughs> what kind of fuckery is this? <laughs> Oh, you never know. Well-trained hounds have an uncanny way of sniffing out things no matter where you keep them. Interior design magazine. <laughs> That's like I trying to find shit. I admire the passion, though. It takes a lot of energy for someone to leave bed this early, let alone knock at someone else's door at this hour. This is funny because of the fact that you were like... Like, looking for news in an interior design magazine mm -hmm. is like trying to find current events by going to Ikea. Yeah, like... <laughs> that aside, unfortunately, you're going to have to come back some other day. You see, darling wife left not a moment ago. I have not an inkling where she went, or when she'll be back. So you're better off. Wait, then how did our relationship with her go up? I think we're about to be like. the movies. Oh! Just sitting there with like a shite and ground, you're like, oh, it would appear my wife has suddenly came back from her errand. <laughs> <laughs> he stops speaking altogether, and the complacent expression he has collapses on itself. You fuckwit. <laughs> oh, she's look, she's not got the creepy ass neck with her. This is before she got fucking possessed. Slowly, he turns just as his wife walks up to him with a step too lively for comfort. A smile too sweet, to be honest. She's very likely heard everything her husband and I have talked about. Going off somewhere. Whoopsie I've got a few things I want them to transfer already. Marianne made this splendid arrangement for the music room and... Love, are you listening? No. I thought you already left, Buttercup. <laughs> she musters a frown. A pout more like... Mm. Each. Oh, mm. The mischievous gleam in her eyes when she glances at me says all there is I need to know. I would have laughed at her antics if it wouldn't offend the other man. But as it is, it's better to let his wife have her fun without any reaction from me. I'm treading on dangerous grounds with him already. Well, I most certainly have not left yet. I wouldn't be standing here if I did, would I? Of course you wouldn't be, darling. But don't you need to be somewhere else today? Something... something with Marianne? They sorted a meeting, didn't they? I think so, yeah. Oh, shopping girl things? <laughs> no. I'll be leaving in a few. Unless you want to join us. Oh, no, thanks, darling. I'm afraid my liver is killing me today. A fucking course, Mr. Other, Rather, other way about, you're killing your liver. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I thought as much. Mm. You needn't have to worry. I'll be gone in a few. It's just that I heard we have a visitor. What kind of person would I be if I didn't greet him before leaving? How did they hear? A very gracious one, I'm sure. I'm more like she, how did she hear? Zachary, right? She was just like... Zach? She was just like behind a tree like, <laughs> I'm a friend of Hannah. And then she, and she's like, mmm. <laughs> Fred. It's a pleasure to see you again. Take make friendship bracelets. <laughs> Likewise, ma'am. I was actually looking for you. Is that so? What for? A huge display of unprofessionalism is what it's for. <sighs> Shush, darling. Let the man speak. I'm sure it isn't anything like that if he has to come all the way here, yes? It's about ghosts. <laughs> it's about yesterday. The photos you asked, I mean. The copies are ready, but... My hand stills as I'm about to fish the prints out of my pocket. A short second passes that which strikes me how I didn't think this through at all. <sighs> how I'll go about telling her regarding the strange photos or revealing this to her in the presence of another person. Her husband gazing over us like a hawk doesn't provide any sort of comfort either. I'm really nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I think another choice is coming yeah. up. I can and, feel it. And just like that, all the words I have been practicing to say on the way here inevitably fall swiftly, stiffly off my mouth. Miss Wright must have noticed my hesitance, because shortly she gives her husband's arm a gentle squeeze, a tender smile gracing her face. Unlike the first, this one is meant to appease. Love, I think Hansi might need some of your input for the final guest list. Could you check on him, please? Uh, could you bone him, please? <laughs> <laughs> you just hear from the back, like, I would like that very much, sir. Oh my god, I, I, I ship it. I'm sorry. Bollocks, why in all Luxborn do I have to be there? <laughs> 
doing <laughs> tedious jobs are what he's being paid for. Box. Because if we <laughs> end up with people whose faces you do not want to show up in our housewarming party, we won't be hearing the end of it. Unless a heavy dose of liquor is involved. You know what the doctor said about that. Yeah, Mr. Wrong. Please do poor Hansi and your liver a favor, hmm? <laughs> he can handle that on his own, Buttercup. And my liver is doing just fine. I'm sure it is. But I don't know, love. I think I caught a glimpse of the name Mitch Lakes, was it? I think it was Mitch Lakes on it when I checked with Mitch the fucking there. Lakes. <laughs> Mitch fucking Lakes. Mitch Lakes. It was like loads of shotgun for the parlors. So that's what. Yo ha! <laughs> should see for yourself. It was quite a list. Name though, I love it. Who put that blighted twat in there? <laughs> and that's why I'm asking you to look over it before I do so tonight. And I love her cap she has. Oh, like, that's yes. why I told you. That's, that's, that's what? That's why I told well. you, darling. I told you he was a blighted twat. Oh. <laughs> but even with that promise, he doesn't appear ready to leave. Short of passing through the doors, he stops and glances back at me, all without bothering to hide the distrust in his eyes. Luke, dear, I'll be fine. Mm. Go back to your butler. I'm not some pregnant wife you have to worry about. <laughs> fine, fine. I have to go to that little ankle biter's career day later anyway. Who? <laughs> I don't see why I have to go there. Kylie's your goddaughter. And yet, she has you around her little fingers, darling. That's basically the same thing. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> gonna, your hand's gonna pour some ice cold water on that burn. <sighs> if he ever has an answer to that, we don't get to hear it above the heavy thud the door makes. And Mrs. Wright's own weary exhale after she's sure her husband is out of earshot. She's nothing but apologetic when she faxes her years back to me. And I can't help but return the same to her. I am so sorry you had to deal with that. My husband can be a bit trying when he really applied himself. Can he? Half? <laughs> it's fine, Miss Wright. No harm done. It was my fault for showing up here unannounced. It was just the fact that because Ash was like, don't talk to the Ermine Guards, and we're like, we should go to the Ermine Guard, bitch! <laughs> Let not listen to them. They're not as bad. Well, uh, she's not as bad. Miss Hannah's not as bad. And this might be strange come from me, but he does have the right to be wary. The press can be quite vicious when it wants to be. Caught unexpectedly, they'll pick you apart. It's not surprising why he acted the way he did around me. Sweetie, if Luke treats every journalist who shows up here like that, I'm afraid we'll end up with a harassment lawsuit hanging over our heads sometime in the future. Vicious or not, some sort of finesse has to be exercised when dealing with them. I'm sorry, I hope that wasn't too offensive. Not at all, Miss Wright. <laughs> Pout. Besides, mm. I don't think an interior design magazine would be interested in who harassed who this week. Unless it has something to do with fighting over tastefully arranged furniture. But even then, I don't think our readers will be too interested. Oh, dearie. You've got a lot to learn. <laughs> you really have no idea how a single tattle can ignite a spark in a crowd. Of course, at the end of the day, it's still the thought that counts. It's still a lovely anniversary gift for my husband. No matter. Let's just go. She doesn't wait for an answer and immediately wanders over a car park some distance from us. Oh. You're coming! <laughs> okay. Unsure, I find myself trailing after her. A chauffeur automatically opens the passenger side door as she nears, and she gestures for me to follow when she climbs into the back seat. To... Where are we going exactly? Are we going on a date? Because <laughs> I wouldn't mind that, honestly. I think Zachary and Hannah would be cute. I need to get out of this stuffy house for a while. Moving in, planning the party. It's starting to get suffocating in there. And you're coming! <laughs> and you're coming! Luke and Hansi can have their fun while I'm gone. I don't care. I'm getting out because I can. Another minute in there and I'll drown. <laughs> They'll be having fun already. <laughs> ah! My bike. <laughs> oh, a bit amazing, just like she goes and then Luke just walks in and he's like, and Hansi's like, Is she gone? Is she gone, sir? Yes, yes, she's gone. Shall I initiate the sodomy protocol, sir? <laughs> There are, of course, a lot of things questionable about her invitation, considering she's a grown up married ass woman and just casually inviting someone to go on wherever the hell she's going. <laughs> I mean, to be fair. 
why she's asking a person she's only known for less than two days in the first place as one. How appropriate this is being another. But the rest of it crashes the moment she shoots me an imploring look. Please, I can have someone send it back to your address later. And it's just a trip to the city for some furniture, nothing more, I assure you. Oh my god, I cannot wait to see like Johans and his full suit driver like a pedal bike, like miles <laughs> to back. Marianne will be with us, and maybe you can tell me why you're here on the way. I uh, guess it wouldn't hurt. I might have to leave early though. Excellent then. Hop in. That's what they often say, yes? <laughs> this can't be a good idea, but I really don't have any other choice, do I? Oh no, I think it's a great idea. Let's go. Let's we go. Have, we have not been in the business of making good ideas. We need, On we, would we go? We need to spend some good time with Hannah because she, before she becomes possessed by the pale bitch, so let's go. Especially with the way her eyes light up when I agreed to it. In my pocket and the very picture of her, her remains faceless. A voice the shadow hanging threateningly between us, unknown to her. As we go to the magical mystical village of Luxbourg. <laughs> But yeah, we've done an entire hour here. Well, maybe it won't be in editing, but you know what? Um, I'd say I'll put under on it, because that's the good thing about visual novels. We do get surprised and the worth of content in. Yeah, I, I say we've done really well this episode, and I think we should leave it here. Um, but yeah, what did you think of this episode, Kieran? I'm just terrified in case like <laughs> we've picked, like, this is the one choice that's doomed the entire playthrough, and like we've picked the bad ending. <laughs> You know what, I think it really just goes to show that, like, quite possibly, no way you pick can be wrong. Yeah. Um, well, at least those two weren't yeah, going to go like, either it's like, the walking, it's like The Walking Dead. It's Aye. like the Telltale series. There's, in a game like this, this is why I would implore people, like, Yang Yang Mobiles, that it seems like a pretty good game developer anyway, and especially yeah. with the letter, I would say, pick up yourself, because yes. we, we're... Me, well, Zach and Zach, <laughs> Neko and me are going to try very hard to do as many choices as possible, but we're probably not going to get to them all, and eventually we will have to go to a certain route. Exactly. So the best thing you can do is pick up the story yourself and see, like, maybe you would actually be not nice to this person. Yeah. Maybe you'd actually, you know what, I want to go the other way. Support Yang Yang Mobile because they are awesome. Oh, by the way, in case you guys didn't know, they actually noticed me the other day. They, re they they liked and like retweeted my tweets on Twitter. I flipped the fuck out. I was like, oh my fucking god. Same pan out as me. <laughs> but I they're, they're really cool and you should definitely support them as best as they can because they're, they're, they've done so well so far. I mean, and they made this great game. So I, I can't wait to see what they do next. And I am hooked as shit so far. Yes, I can't. I can't wait to continue this. Thanks for having me again. Anytime you're always welcome and. Uh, and it's goodbye for me. See you in the next one, and don't let your memes be dreams. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and we will see you guys in the next one. Roll the outro.